A key factor in any high performance engine is having the right clearances. Things get pretty heated in there and those tiny gaps being the wrong size can cause poor compression, burning oil, overheating and even premature wear of important parts. So in this video I'll be inspecting the pistons, the rings and the cylinder barrels to make sure they're all in spec. Plus I'll have a go at putting a fresh hone on these rather glazed cylinder walls. First things first, it's over to the parts washer to remove any soils and grime on the cylinder block. I removed the base gasket. Now it doesn't look like you can get these from Kawasaki anymore, but I can see a few on eBay and there's a few reputable pattern parts available. I blew them dry with an airline, flushing out all the gunk that had built up in the cooling channels. Then I set the heat nice and high on the ultrasonic cleaner and prepared the pistons for cleaning. I removed the top compression ring, being careful not to score the cylinder or distort the ring too much. Then I did the same with the middle ring. And finally, the oil control ring. There's three parts to this, two thin rings sandwiching a spreader ring. With the rings off, I'll put the piston in the basket. I'll do two at a time, partly as it'll help me avoid mixing them up, but mainly as I can only fit two in my ultrasonic cleaning tank. I set the timer for 20 minutes and hit start. After two rounds each, here's how they looked. Much better, and clean enough for me to give them a proper look over. I laid out the cylinder block and pistons, and then I busted out my new tools. I picked up a 50 to 75 millimeter micrometer. The bore size on these engines is 73 mil, so this should cover everything I need. I fitted the 50mm spacer and calibrated it. I also picked up some telescoping gauges. These will allow me to measure the internal diameter of the cylinder bores. This one covers 54 to 90mm, so this is the one I'll need. I sketched out a quick diagram of the four cylinders where I can record the measurements as I go. I'm going to be taking four measurements from each cylinder front to back and side to side at two different depths within the cylinder. That way I can check for both tapering and ovality. I had a quick visual inspection of all the cylinders, running my nail around the wall to feel for any scoring, but they all felt good. I put my telescoping gauge in the cylinder and locked it off at the first measurement. Then I measured that with a micrometer. Now because the ends of the gauge are domed, I had to make sure it was square. 73.03 millimeters. I made a note and took the lower measurement. Seventy-three point zero two millimeters. Then I took the side to side measurement, top and bottom. There is some wear, but I checked the service limit in the manual and they were all well under the service limit of 73.1 millimeters. I continued along the other three cylinders and here's the result. All generally between 73 and 73.02 mil, with the exception of that first one I took. And I wondered if that was worth me measuring again since I've no doubt dialed in the technique as I've been doing it. Sure enough, it came back as 73.02, which is much more in line with the rest. 
Next up was the pistons. I checked around the sides for scoring marks or any damage, but they all looked clean. There were some light marks, but nothing I could feel with my fingernail. I took a measurement across the base of the skirt and subtracted that from the top side to side measurement to calculate the clearance in the cylinder. It was within the tolerance specified, so I moved on to the others. Now a set of rings is about £55 each, so I really wanted to check the condition of these before committing to buying new ones. Next I measured their end gaps by placing them in the bottom of the cylinder, about 10mm in. Then I pushed it in square over piston, and I used a feeler gauge to check the gap. The top and middle rings have different clearance, so I needed to make sure I knew exactly which one I was measuring. They have different profiles which you can just about see, though of course I still managed to get them mixed up. I repeated the same for the oil control rings and moved on through the rest of the cylinders. Now these were all well below the service limit and had no damage on them, so there may be some life in them yet. It's worth saying here that I did do a compression test before I stripped the bike and it's got good healthy compression across all four cylinders so I'm not really expecting anything worrying. So optimistically I refitted the rings to the pistons. The next check I wanted to do on these was the clearance between the rings and the grooves in the piston. As I'm still getting quite used to this I'm being quite cautious with these. I didn't want to rush and potentially damage them or scrape the edge of the piston. With the oil control ring in and spinning freely, I worked the middle ring over and into its groove. Finally, the top compression spring. With them all in, I could take my feeler gauge and measure the groove clearance on the top and middle rings. I checked them against the manual and they're all well under the service limit. I worked through the next cylinder in the same way, starting to get the hang of fitting the rings. Well that's these guys ready to go back in for many more miles to come. The next job on the list was giving the cylinder walls a fresh hone to get the correct cross hatch finish. I clamped them down to the bench, then got my honing stones, some lightweight oil, and my drill. I gave the first cylinder a good coating of the oil to lubricate it. I'll have to gauge the speed I need to draw them in and out at, to match the RPM of the drill. That way I'll get the right angle of the cross hatching. 45 degrees is the sweet spot. I gave it a clean out, inspected it to see how I did. It's not too bad, but could do have been a little bit steeper on the angles, so I tried again moving slightly quicker. I also kept the oil spraying in to help keep it looped up. That was better. Now I can move on to the next one. I've got my pace right now. When you slow the footage down, you can actually see the stones are moving pretty close to 45 degrees.
Here's a little reminder of how they looked before. Pretty glazed and shiny. Now this is how they look after. Happy enough with my first go at this. Well, they're now all cleaned up, checked over, and almost ready to go back together. Before I do that though, I'm gonna mask them up, ready for a fresh coat of paint. So the next job on the engine is the cylinder head. But before I do that, all the bits I need for the wheels and the forks are here. So I'm gonna jump back onto those and get the rolling chassis finished. I'll see you then.